Hey everyone, it's Lou here. So today I want to talk to you about something that has been pretty revolutionary for me as a guitarist, and that is preset automation. So in the past, I mean this isn't new, but it's new to me, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, in the past, with my band Sonoa, I used to use a traditional pedal board where it was fun and all, you know, I liked to do the whole pedal dance, and I took pride in that, but, you know, it, it got old. <laughs> It was just a hassle to have to remember so many changes. I actually counted. I ended up saving about 96 clicks, 96 stomps. And it's just so liberating not having to think about that. And it actually did get in the way a little bit. While it was fun clicking around, it actually allows me to be more in the moment, more engaged and immersed in the music and actually being able to engage with the crowd and everything. So I think overall, it's just a much more... <laughs> fun experience to perform on a stage not having to think about what to click with my feet next and not only that but it did get in the vo in the way with vocals like sometimes i would have some vocal harmonies to play and just having to look down in order to kick in my lead tone while singing like even there you probably heard my vocal dropped out significantly in in volume that would happen much more in actual live shows because Maybe the pedals were a little far away and I actually had to be more around here. And then it's like, that's a no, that's a no go. So yeah, that's no longer a problem. You know, problem solved with technology. I have over here the Neural DSP Quad Cortex who's communicating with Mr. Mac via USB, uh, not USB, I'm actually connected USB on my audio interface, but the audio interface has a MIDI out which is connected with a MIDI cable to the MIDI in of the quad cortex. So that's how that's happening. And if I show you in Ableton Live, so I used to use Logic Pro for all this, but the reason I use Ableton Live is, there's a bunch of reasons I switched over, but um, one of the main reasons for live performance is actually all of the keyboard shortcuts. So I used to have to zoom in and everything and like scroll through the timeline to find what song I wanna play. But now the beginning of each song is mapped to a button and those buttons are the number pads basically. So number one is the first song on the set list. The number two is the second song, etc. So if I jump straight to number seven, that's going to be the seventh song in the set list. So that was really cool to not be confined to a specific order of songs. If we wanted to change the set list order, we can do that on the fly, just the hit of a button. Okay, so now that I showed you my setup, Let's start over from scratch so you can really see from the ground up and follow along step by step. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a new MIDI track. Then you can go to the right side, just select the device that you want to send the MIDI messages from to the quad cortex. In my case, I have the Scarlett 18i20, which is my audio interface, and that has a MIDI output that is connected to the MIDI input in my quad cortex. So just go ahead and select the one that you're using. The next thing you're going to want to do is create a new MIDI clip. I'll double click into the grid to do that. And then I'll just drag it to the right command J to join it into a single clip. And then you can see on the left side, there is the tool panel. The two key parts of this tool panel we want to focus on are launch and envelopes. If you don't see those, it's probably because you're in a different view. So you're just going to want to match my view by dragging it either to the right or to the left of that tool panel. If you're on this horizontal view, that launch icon is this play icon and the envelope is this diagonal line with the two points on each end. So in this launch side, two areas you're going to want to focus on are sub and program. You don't have to worry about bank, but the sub and program are correlated to the directory of the quad cortex. So if I just switch over to the quad cortex screen, you'll see this is my directory. I have a folder for Sonoa and there's the Sonoa songs. So I'll just switch songs. Here's no matter. So that's what that looks like. And sub three is equal to my Sonoa folder. And program one would be the first song in that folder. So that would be alone. So if I switch over to this screen, I can show you now that I've set that to sub three and program one, it's going to go ahead and trigger that song when I press play. And I'll just go ahead and go full screen so you can really see that the song switched to alone. I'll go ahead and switch to another value. Let's go program two. That should go to common sense. 
So if I press play, you'll see it switches to common sense. Another thing you're going to want to consider is the different scenes within a preset. If you want eight different sounds for a single song, you can switch presets with eight entirely new scenes, but there is a little bit of a latency if you switch from preset to preset. So I highly recommend just utilizing those eight scenes, which are the stomps A, B, C, D, all the way through H. And that is because there's no latency at all when you switch between the different scenes. Now, if there's a part in the song where you're not even playing and it doesn't matter if there's latency between switching presets and you want more than eight sounds in a single song, then go ahead and use two different presets. Just be mindful of that latency gap. In order to actually set up the automation for the different scenes, you're going to go ahead to the envelopes and make sure this is set to MIDI control. And on the right side of that, there's another drop down where you're going to want to set it to 43. And the reason I say 43, if you look at the documentation, there's a manual. You can just download it and go to the MIDI section. And as you can see, CC43 corresponds to the different scenes. And value 0 through 7 corresponds to A through H. So how would that work in Ableton? Well, you just draw it out. So you enter a point in this point of the song for it to be scene A. And one would be scene B. So you can right click and edit value and type in the number one, and that should be your scene B. So as you can see, it's going to switch between A and B over time once I press play. Ready? Go. Just like that. So there you go. That's how you automate the Quad Cortex preset and scene changes using Ableton Live 11. If you found this video helpful at all in any way, shape, or form, please subscribe, comment, leave a like, as it'll surely help this brand new channel. Until next time, I'll see you next video.